Welcome everyone, always to the basement binge. It has been far too long. A hot minute. Uh, yes, I'm Harrison. I'm Kelton. And I'm Cade. And this week, we finished the MCU Phase 2 Woo! with Ant-Man. And uh, it was a joy to watch this movie. So, always, let's jump into our spoiler wall, which is our one minute of spoiler-free reactions. And then at the end of it, if we would or would not recommend it. And uh, Kelton, do you want to go first? Yeah, bring on. All right, just to inform everyone, I have I'm like recovering from a cold, so if I sound like crap, bear with me. So, um, Ant Man, spoiler wall. This is a, I think a great movie. It takes a step down from kind of the intensity and big picture scheme of the whole MCU, and it brings it down to a lot more of like I feel like a local level. So it's good. It's kind of a nice break from the. Um, constant like intensity that all the other MCU movies have up until this point in Phase Two, so it's a lot of fun to watch. It's just and you really connect with Ant Man as a superhero. Um, I feel like he's a lot more down to earth. Um, and it's freaking hilarious. This movie is full of so many good jokes and lines that you're gonna be quoting it like all the time with your friends. <laughs> so I absolutely love this movie. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. I guarantee you, you'll like it. So, there you go. All right. I'll go next. I will say this. Uh, I'm actually going to disagree with Kellen on here on how to describe this movie. This movie is not a superhero movie. Despite it being called Ant-Man, it doesn't give off that kind of feeling toward it. As When you watch the movie, it's it's a, a tech, like a technology and adventure kind of a movie, but it's it's got a lot of humor to where it's not cheesy, but it's just downright funny, where you can joke about it, and you quote the movie quite a lot. Me and my, me, Kelton and Harrison, we always quote this movie a lot, just because it's got some famous lines in it. I will, the rating with this movie, it's speech 13, it's just because of the violence. Um, there's a couple of cuss words, but they're very, they're not incredibly mature cuss words, but it's, this movie is a, it's incredibly enjoyable, and it's a down-to-earth adventure movie. That's how that's how I describe it. And yes, and yes, I would re- recommend it. Okay, here's my minute. Uh, this is a very good. I wouldn't call it a comedy, but it's very funny, as has been mentioned three times now. Um, but it's a, a super, super good superhero movie to contradict what Kate said in the way that it's a, a guy who kind of has his origin story and becomes a superhero and fights a bad guy but it's a great like heist movie you know like like Ocean's Eleven or something like that like totally different but it's just a good heist movie in so many ways and it's so different from like especially like Avengers Age of Ultron which comes right before this and like the big Avengers level threats to quote Mysterio it's just like brings it down like Kelton said to a local level and it's just a dude like wanting to be with his daughter, so he just helps some people who are just saving the world, you know. But it like, yeah. So what I recommend it definitely, and also based off what I said last time with the Age of Ultron about like rewatchability, this movie has great rewatchability. I don't get sick of it. Um, there's not parts of it that annoy me with rewatch. So what I recommend it most definitely. So that is the end of our spoiler wall. If you have not seen the movie, go enjoy it. Go laugh a bunch. Watch it with some friends, have some fun. Come back, listen to the regular scheduled program. Uh, thanks for listening to the spoiler wall. But if you're listening all the way through, we're gonna keep plowing ahead after a short announcement from our friend Kelton. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. So we have taken a little break these past couple weeks. Things have been kind of crazy with us on our end, but we are back into doing our podcast. We missed it. We missed you guys. So. Um, announcement is our downloads. Even though we've taken a little break, we're still getting some downloads. Um, I don't know how the heck you guys, yeah, I don't know how the heck you guys find like us, even though we're not like actively promoting it at the moment. Like you guys are awesome. So right now we're almost at 600 downloads total for our podcast. Which is awesome. Great. We'd love to like see the support and stuff and we're still going to try and push for a thousand. That is our goal. We'll see if we make it. We're going to try our best. But just give you the update. We're like at 592, 596 downloads up until now. So 
a quick update to let you guys know. Thanks for downloading our podcast, even though we've been kind of absent. But we're back! Woo! Not going anywhere anytime soon either. So yeah, breakdown of the show. Let's jump into it. Always start with our two cents, which is our two minutes of uninterrupted time to give our knee-jerk reaction to the movie, followed by Pick Your Poison ranking, where we you know give our personal rating scale, which is Pick Your Poison, followed up our MCU ranking that we're just following through with all the MCU movies, binge points, the details, Easter eggs, things like that, lease and likes, lastly, fall in, which is our feelings, themes, messages, book report level status. All right, this is the start of two cents. All right, knee-jerk reactions, what we think of the movie, even though, if I remember right, all of us have watched this before. So, I'll start with my two cents of what I think of the movie. Here we go. This movie, I remember rating this pretty low. I don't really remember um, much of it other than those those hilarious quotes. Um, no, I think the quotes like "back it up, back it up, yep, yeah, back it up, back it up." <laughs> Near the end of the movie, it's this movie is loads of fun. It's like what Harrison mentioned the re- the rewatchability of this movie is hilarious because it's there's a lot of people who say that it's it's not a superhero movie because. Like for instance, my my mom is so against superhero movies. She's she's just kind of sick of them, and so she's just decided not to watch any of them if any any more even come out. But this movie, I f- she, I feel like she would watch this movie because it's it's a step down. It's more local. It's more relatable. It's it's a lot more fun. It ties more toward a, a story and a heist rather than just being a guy a person that's like invincible and complete fantasy. This is kind of more of a stretch of technology and. A lot of something that we're familiar with, I'd say that. Um, I rank this movie at 16, which is incredibly low <laughs> as far as how good this movie really is. And I, I feel like I want to change that, but I will say this: the I haven't I didn't really watch the cinematography or look for any of um, some big like references or anything like that. I just kind of looked at the movie as as a and as a whole, and this movie is loads of fun, and I want to. I want to go back and I want to memorize his uh, Leo's Luis's ramble and memorize it completely so I can like recite it word for word with the same speed too, because that's just absolutely hilarious. It's just a movie that you want to quote over and over, and so that I say that kind of criteria, that want for this movie makes it that makes it into a, some sort of different kind of level of. Of, a, of like a description of a good movie, if that makes sense. It's you can you want to quote it, so it makes it that much better of a movie. But my time is up. All right, start my two minutes. Uh, this is like, like Kate said. This movie's just a ton of fun, and it's really interesting. I love like uh, I don't know what the word I'm searching for, but I just have a lot of respect for the the producers and directors and everyone involved at Marvel Studios who, like, they have a lot of success with the traditional superhero movies, and I feel like Phase 2 especially was them trying so many new things. You have, like, Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man 3, Ant-Man. They're all such different takes on the traditional superhero movie. Um, and I feel like they're like, all right, we're going to get Paul Rudd, and Michael Pena, like two of the most like hilarious like comedy actors, and we're gonna get him to be in a superhero movie, but we're gonna make it a heist movie. And like it's definitely not a perfect movie, but it's fun to enjoy because it's new and it's not just you know, copy and paste of everything that, that you've seen before. Um, but it's super fun to enjoy. the The cast is phenomenal. There's a lot of like emotional scenes in it that are actually really really well done and well acted. The music is some of my favorite in all of the MCU. Um, it's just a simple like family movie about a family just like struggling to be a family and make it in the world, which is really relatable, which is fun. The, I already mentioned that the heistness of it, like the kind of the burglary of it is a ton of fun. The cinematography also with the whole idea of like shrinking and being the size of an ant is actually like really amazing to watch. Kind of like mind bending. Um, but yeah, it's hilarious. It's just a good time to watch have a ton of fun um you know like like i said i'm definitely going to rewatch this movie again and have a good time every single time like i i this isn't one of those movies that i get like overly excited about but anytime i think about watching it i i think on this movie with fondness i'm like you know i like that movie it's fun <laughs> you know i i don't like have any blatant complaints about it because it's just so much fun to enjoy all the time as far as ranking i remember putting it pretty high 
Um, it's definitely fun. I just don't know if it's going to stay high. Uh, I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, lots of fun. Good heist movie. All right, Kelton, you ready? Yep, send it. All right. So I had this Ray rated at, where did I put it? Number eight. I really liked this movie. Um, I'm afraid that's going to fall, but who knows? We'll see. But Ant-Man, I think it's a great movie because, first off, we know that, like, Scott Lang is not a good guy. Like, he, the first scene, like, the first couple scenes, you see him get out of prison. Yeah. And, like, he's trying to start his, like, life. But to go into it really quick, I think this movie is really cool because it shows two different, like, relationships between a father and a daughter. Like, Scott and his daughter, Cassie. Like, Scott wants to be with Cassie, but he just can't because he, you know, his life is kind of turned upside down. He's just got a prison. He's trying to figure things out, and he wants to be with her, and he has to, like, overcome that struggle. But then you have um, Hope. Hope and her dad, Dr. Pim. Pim. Yeah, thank you. And, like, they have, like, such a dynamic relationship because Hope lost her mom when she was a little girl, and, like, Dr. Pym dedicated his life to find them all, but, like, it's just, like, super choppy, and they want to figure things out, but they just kind of can't, and so I think it's really cool to look at the two different relationships, but um, in terms of this movie, in terms of, like, a heist, I freaking love heist movies. Every time I, I watch a heist movie, no matter if it's good or bad, I always think of that meme from Emperor's New Groove, where it's Kronk, and it's oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that movie, and like I feel like this movie does a really good job in terms of being like a heist of where you just get to see them like train and practice, and like you get to see the whole plan. And when it finally comes together, it's just so much fun to watch because obviously there's like hiccups along the way, things don't go right, but they still like figure it out in the end. Whether it's like super funny or just like intense, it's just a ton of fun to watch. So, and like Kate and Harrison both said, the action. And the comedy in this is so funny. It still just makes it worth watching every time after that. So, I also just think that on the comedy is so the emotion, the action, the comedy is all timed very, very well. Yeah. The the editors and scripters and directors and actors and whoever's involved in that process did a very good job at making the timing of it flow really well, and nothing was ever intruding on anything else. Yeah, or too pushy. Yeah, the comedy was never forced, and it never got in the way of the emotion or the action. And the, unless it was in, in one scene, which I'll mention later, oh. it got this, the sense of humor got in the way of, of like a, a very emotional scene, which I'll get to that. But real quick, I just realized we should do a top ten heist movie list. That would be that really would cool. Be That'd be so fun. Top of the list: Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Twelve. Ocean's Thirteen. <laughs> Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Italian Eleven, job. Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Eleven, <laughs> Italian job. <laughs> anyway, anyway, next segment. So next segment is pick our poison and a ranking. We already kind of got into it. But yeah, personal rating scale at the bottom. Never an eternity watch again. It would be torture to watch it again. Right above that is uh, stream it. Is that what's above it? I'm getting, yeah, stream. So above that is stream it. If it's on a streaming service that you're already subscribing to, you would watch it. Above that is rent. You Go pay money for it at a red box or on Vudu somewhere to rent it. And top of the list biggest award is to buy it and then also our ranking of the mcu but we'll go around and share our pick or poison first and then circle back for rankings so my pick my poison i have already bought it i would buy it again uh for the purpose of ranking uh one because it's a part of the mcu but two it's a movie that i've watched multiple times and enjoyed every single time and i will enjoy again and again and it's again one of those movies that's like you know when you're looking for like I don't know if you guys have ever had like a movie night with friends or with family. You're like, let's watch a movie. And like, you don't really have something in mind and everybody's yeah. seen everything and you're not really looking for anything new. And almost like kind of just turn your brain off, watch a movie, have fun. This is like the perfect movie for that. Definitely. And it's just, there's a lot of moments where re-watching it is a good fit. And everyone will have fun. So yes, I would definitely buy it. And for my ranking, like, even though I'm still living at home with my parents, but when I like actually plan on like, leaving and becoming like independent i plan on buying this movie and having it like at my house so that is my rating i would definitely buy this movie so i could watch it anytime i want my rating i'd say the same it's it's a movie that you can recommend to somebody but it's also a movie where if you have a family and you want some sort of you want a plethora of movies you can watch as a family this is a movie that you can trust 
to where you can buy it and show your family, like show your wife, show your kids, and they would enjoy it. It's, it's a whole lot of fun for everybody else because because of how much how qual how much of a quality movie it really is. So that's what I would say. Um, as far as rankings go, with where we put it in phase two on its own and as a total, I mentioned before mine was sixteen. Um, on phase two, it was like at number five out of the six the movies. It's at the bottom. Um, I want to move it up. Just because it's a quality movie, but we'll see at the very end. Oh, yeah. So my ranking for Ant-Man in the whole Infinity Saga is number eight, also in the top ten. Uh, wow, that was pretty high. Uh, it's probably going to stay really high. Like I said, it, it's a movie that I really love, love watching again. But there's just like some, just reminded in rewatching the movies, movies, we haven't even got to phase three yet. Uh, but there's like some really, really impressive movies. So we'll see where it lands after things get mixed around. But I have hopes for it staying high. I enjoy it. And in the phase, uh, just to scroll down to that super quick, I have it at number three. Probably a pretty solid stop, stop, spot for it. Things, of course, are going to move around it. But I think it's it's a good spot for it in the phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in terms of like ranking, mine's like the exact same as Harrison's. I have it eight overall. And then in like phase two. I have ranked it um, number three as well. Dude, were you like cheating? Straight up, dude. I just looked at what you were doing. (laughs) (laughs) With the binders in front of you, looking over. (laughs) Dude, those were the days, man. I miss those days. Actually, no, I don't. I do not miss those days at all. (laughs) But, yeah, I think... um, I really don't know. It's tough, like, looking at the movies I have placed below it, but it'll be fun to rank those again. I'm really looking forward to the podcast. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. It's a quality movie, though. Yeah. All right. I think that go- takes us to our next segment, which is our binge points. Any Easter eggs or just cool things you liked about the movie that we just kind of want to point out? So. Okay. I got to talk about the cinematography. I am blown away by this. I knew this going into it, but let me pull up his name because I'm just really impressed with it. What is his name? Russell Carpenter, the director of the photography, the DP on this movie. Holy smokes. When he shrinks for the first time in the bathtub, that is not 100% CGI. Like, of course, there's parts of the CGI, but a lot of it is done with, like, macro and probe lenses. Is such and, like, in the story. other shrinking scenes, they use macro and probe lenses in combination with CGI so well that it, like, especially in the bathtub, like, perfectly portrays the feeling of shrinking down to the size of an ant for the first time, unknowing what the oh, heck yeah. is going on. And the wa- when the water comes yeah, out of the it's pot. Just, oh, dude. When he's so miniature, I was, I was saying, like, <laughs> I don't know, the, just when he's miniature, the cinematography, the cinematography of the ants, I know a lot of it's CGI, but I know a lot of it was done in camera, and it's really impressive, but it's also just so well done, and even the CGI, like, movement of the camera feels fitting to the size that he is. Um, other super small, like, bench point about it, they made me feel like when ants are, like, climbing out of a sink and flying, like, that it was sweet, like, oh, yeah, oh, like, here yeah, comes the dude. boys, like, <laughs> so pumped. Like, squad roll it up <laughs> yeah yeah like it's the same feeling but like it's a bunch of ants climbing out of a sink like <laughs> <laughs> to be honest like while we're actually talking about cinematography i don't know about you guys but i thought the lighting was really cool in some of the like scenes and stuff like that yes and one thing that like pops out it's like kind of random kind of weird but like right when scott lang i think it's when he gets out of prison or he gets like fired from baskin robbins but harrison and i both noticed he was walking and the light behind him just like really stood oh, out. He looked like man candy, straight up. Like good <laughs> looking man. Remember like you guys mentioned, like, wow, guy's a good it's like, man. dude, and that was like the first thing that popped in my head. But I mean, props to like the lighting. You know, great like cinematography. Yeah. Right Key there. to a good looking man is lighting. Straight up, dude. Moral of the story. It's my excuse. I just have bad lighting. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, this movie had some like really cool moments that even like with the villain, I forget his name. Uh, Darren, Darren Cross. And yeah. Yellow Jacket. Yeah. But like I noticed, especially when he's every time he's doing like his presentations, like the lights were always like bright behind him, yeah. and so kind of shrouded him in dark. I thought it was really cool because it just like subconsciously it like makes you perceive him as evil. Yeah, and those are just like subtle things you don't really pick up on when you watch a movie, but that your subconscious does, and it like yeah. I think it really does affect on how you like perceive. Or think about certain characters in the movie. So. Yeah, because you you look as you're watching a movie, you have, I, I I feel like everybody has this to an extent where they're trying to predict what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like, oh, I think he's the bad guy, or I think this is gonna happen, or oh, they're gonna fall in love. This is a love story. Where the lighting, the way they angle it, and everything, all their work is that they 
kind of get a faded arrow t- pointed toward Darren Cross, but they used the lighting for that. Yeah. Which I thought that was really, really interesting, which the story does play along that, but it was, the story kind of played him as a, like a, he's a, a sidekick that was betrayed in, yeah, in his true. eyes. Yeah, that's true. Like a sidekick back for revenge. The other thing I want to say is the production design. Everybody who like, whenever they go to like PIM Labs or whatever it's called, whenever they're with Darren Cross, like everything's like glass and really fancy lights and like super high tech. I was like amazed how like high tech and like uh, expensive it looked. It just looked really good. Like yeah. someone had to build that. Good job. I mean, maybe it's real and they're just filming <laughs> on a location. And it's not that impressive, but either way, it's cool. Um, but other funny details, like just bench points. So it's so funny to me how like Lewis, he like knocks out like two or three people with just one punch. But oh, it like yeah. hints to it earlier in the movie when he's when Scott is getting out of prison and he's punching the dude, you know, and he's like, "You guys have the weirdest goodbye rituals." So he go and Lewis comes and picks him up and he's like, "He's like, oh, I still got my scar from a year ago." He's like, "You know, I'm still the only one that knocked him out." Yeah, and he's like, yeah, oh, so Lewis is who would like knock that dude out so of course he's knocking out these other dudes he's got a manly punch <laughs> which i think is funny i kind of forgot about that that's way cool the other thing is when ant-man like goes subatom sub the sub subatomic thank you yeah, <laughs> subatomic <laughs> whatever <laughs> there's a little like silhouette of uh the wasp uh pym's wife mrs pym i don't remember her first name Wait, there's a silhouette. Yeah, it's like very when he's like in the quantum realm and is like shrinking like down. And, no, when it, earlier when he's like shrinking down, you can see in one section it's like a shadow or silhouette of her. I did not notice that. I've seen this a couple of times. I did it's not cool. know it had like a little. I knew like obviously like she's in the quantum realm, right? Yeah. Uh, Dude, that's way cool. I did not think about that. What is her name? The wife. Yeah, what's her name? I don't know. She's not in this movie, but I forget her name. Um. What is her name? Uh, Janet. That's her name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is way cool. I didn't know that. I'll so, um, any other binge points? The music in this is perfect oh, heist music. Good. Yeah. It it's is. like bam, 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 <laughs> bam. It's just so good. Like I feel like there's a lot of heist movies that want to copy Mission Impossible, the, that kind of music or the, that kind of tempo. Oh, it's a weird kind of tempo. I'm tempo. I don't remember the actual the name of that, but. It follows that sort of beat, but it's it sounds different. But it they kind of follow that because it kind of like a little it's like very fast, fast yeah. paced, but kind of subtle. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't have any other bitch points. Yeah, points. yeah I, I think I had more, but I can't remember. Anything. Let's see if I wrote anything else down. Uh, nope. nope. Oh, it's kind of I, that was there's one I, um I have when they were in the the suitcase fighting and stuff. And there's a lifesavers like. I would, why would a bag I have candy in his briefcase, <laughs> you know? And then I, I, that, I thought of, like, he's – because ant had the lifesaver and it, like, blew up in his hand and he's trying to fight. So kind of like a reference that he's trying to save the world or he's a lifesaver. <laughs> so maybe that was it, but I was like, why is there candy in the briefcase? <laughs> but – Yeah, I think that's just another, like, hats off to, like, the cool ideas of, like, fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, like, all right, there's so miniature, like – all the fun things are like fighting on the train, like stuff like that. It's oh, almost like it's so almost like weird. predictable. Like, oh, we're making a movie about people that can stream down. Like, we gotta have them fight on a playset. Like, that's yeah. The, every like, everyone did that. <laughs> but like, oh, let's stick them in a suitcase and like have them fight in a briefcase as it's whirling around. Like, that's such a cool idea. And I loved how like they kept like switching on like the perspectives. Like, you'd see how intense and like crazy it is the music of them and fighting zoom and it'd zoom out and just kind of show you how like kind of dumb it looks yeah <laughs> and so it just made it a lot of fun to watch it just like changed your perspective so i love it that. didn't take itself too seriously but it also like took itself <laughs> serious enough that everything yeah like the, a, an appropriate amount so yeah. it makes you kind of think what a uh, life of an ant is is this constantly just like loud massive like metal cars driving by and just like this it makes you think about that i don't know that's all i was thinking you know all right, our next segment here is least and likes favorite scene, least favorite scene, what we didn't like, what we liked, and how we compare. And are we starting favorite or least favorite first? We'll do least favorite first. I will say my least favorite. It was funny. I won't take away from that. But the point where Hope and what's his face, Doctor Pym, Hank Pym, they're having this like 
father daughter moments like pretty intense and it's like this their whole life oh, yeah. he's kept this secret from her and then he finally tells her how how her mother died and then the point where it's like they're becoming close like they finally broke down all their walls then scott lang's like this is awesome you guys breaking walls doing this healing and it's kind of just like totally just cut the scene and just like no emotion anywhere anywhere and that was funny i was like that was a pretty big moment i felt like they could have let it draw out a little more, like respect it, like draw it out a little more, and then throw in some idiot ADC from Scott Lang. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's not my least favorite thing, but I agree. Like every time I watch my, like, oh, this is funny, but like I wish it could have been done different. But it's funny. And well, my least favorite scene, I'd actually have to say it's when Ant Man goes to the Avenger facility to get that old tech when he's fighting uh, Falcon. I th- I like. How the idea of how he has to fight, but the actual like fighting scenes, I was left really confused what was happening. Yeah. Like it was really hard to follow between like flying around, whether Ant Man's big or small. And then like I felt like it was like CGI. Oh, they weren't actually much. at that place. And I don't know, I just like I not this is the first time I actually noticed it, but it drew my eye to like, well that looks like fake. And then like, what's the word for that? There's a word for like, no, like it's it's supposed to look real, but oh, you know, uncanny, uncanny valley. But that's for like faces and humans. Uh, is that? Can, oh, you, can I apply that to scenes? I don't know. I don't know something, but like, yeah, it just that drew my eye, and like, it, I was okay with that. It was more of just like the fighting. It felt weird. Oh, I agree. So my least favorite scene is that same one, and there's I don't know if it is. I'd have to rewatch it, but it seemed like there was one particular move that like the Falcon did that was spread out. But it's, in my head, it seemed like they used the exact same scene. Like, it was just like, all right, we got this clip. All right, now move it down, like, 30 seconds yeah. and play it again. It just felt and, like, weird. like it's not that the idea of Ant-Man fighting Falcon was bad. And, like, the way they're fighting was really cool. But, like, the way it was filmed and edited and shot. Yeah, it just felt, it like, just felt, it just thrown jagged, quickly, separated. And just, and, like, yeah, like, broken. not that these are anywhere near trying to be the same thing. But, like, you take the John Wick franchise where like those fight scenes are organized and choreographed and yeah. edited and filmed by people like by the directors who were stuntmen for Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. So like they were originally stuntmen, so they understand like what a fight scene is and like how to film a fight scene that so that you can follow it and understand it. And there's what's really good and what's bad. Yeah, there's really really good fight scenes like in Captain America Winter Soldier, but like yeah. this one I feel like that choreography or the editing or Filming one of the two, one of the three, or a combination of it made it so that it was hard to follow what was happening. Yeah, so it's like like someone would throw a punch and you don't really know who threw the punch and who's like getting thrown at the wall. Because they're trying to have it, like they're trying to get fast paced, but it was it was too much to the point where it's like, wait, who just got hurt? Now it's like, oh, now they're moving again, and oh, that person just got. So it was just a little harder to follow. But I just remember that, especially that scene with Falcon. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it was, it just felt off. I'm not, it wasn't a terrible scene. I still enjoyed it, but it, yeah. it, in the rest of the movie, that was the part where I was like, wait, what is happening? It, talking about it reminds me of Jason, the Jason Bourne movies, how it, the way it's filmed, it's such a shaky cam, but it, they did it super well. Oh, yeah, it's so and well done. You watch this, and like, you can know. You know, like, each, each frame has a purpose, but then you look at the movie Taken with Liam Neeson, and it's, like, really confusing. So, I mean, maybe it, that made me think of that. Where just they they try to make it really jaggedy and fast paced, but they didn't quite sell it. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was that that made it, but I remember, like, it, I remember just like for that quick time, I was like, did they just reuse the exact same shot? <laughs> this fight seems confusing, anyways. And then and then I was like, all oh, right, he won or whatever, moving on. And like I totally forgot about it until you brought it up. I was yeah. genuinely thinking like, what was my least favorite scene? And then you brought it up. So it's it's not like a glaring thing. That you're like, oh, this is so horrible. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't ruin the pace of the movie. It's a quick fight. Ant Man wins. They walk it's away. Just quirky. Just quirky, and they, they, you move on. They go yeah. back to their heist. I had a question on the bad guy, Darren Cross. What was his motive? His motive was he was betrayed by um, Hank Finn, but the particles was messing with his head. Yeah. So but I he didn't. Sh- I don't remember him shrinking before that. So. Because that's that, that's what they're saying. That what messed with your mind was the particles when you shrink up and down. It like make you lose your mind. Yeah, because you don't have the helmet on. You don't have the helmet on. Yeah. So I don't know if he shrank before, but before this watch of it, I remember watching before and always thinking it was just like, what he just wants to be like super rich. 
so he's gonna like kill somebody because they kept his secrets from him. And like Hydra. And like man, this guy's evil just because he wants money. And I thought I thought it was dumb, but like this time, there's one particular line. And although the movie doesn't like show him shrinking to, without a helmet, but there's one line where Hope says to him, "She's like you're sick. It's the like the particles yeah. messing with your." I don't know, some with his brain. Brain, brain chemistry, that's what he said. And uh, like, slight spoilers to uh, MN and the Wasp, like their understanding and what happens with ghosts. Ghost, I feel like something similar happened to him. Maybe he like had shrank previously in that yellow jacket suit. Like, obviously it fit him and he knew how to use it. He's probably used it before. Yeah, that's true. So it probably messed up his... Like, you, you could tell that he was, you know, a kind of greedy businessman who wanted money. Right. But, like, I noticed as the movie progressed, he got more and more vicious and malicious and, like, you know what I mean? Just like, you right. could tell that something was wrong in his head. Yeah. To, like, to the point yeah, where, where he... he hunted down Scott Lang's daughter, just and she, he's all like, you need to account for, like, your father's mistakes or something. I was like, whoa, what the... That's yeah. So yeah. I feel, and I feel like it was his brain chemistry that got messed up somehow. Yeah, I agree. Makes so. sense. All right. Favorite scenes. Oh, oh do you want me? I'll go first. Yeah, my go favorite, ahead. it's not like anything incredibly, like, incredible action or anything like that. It's just like, I really admire the film understanding that goes into it. So it's the scene when Scott sh- goes sub- subatomic and goes into the quantum realm. And he's like shrinking and whirling past all this like crazy cool CGI that looks amazing, like incredible visual effects. Um, and then all of a sudden, and it's like crazy intense music. And all of a sudden it just goes like black. And the, the music and sound like totally stops. And it almost like gives me the feeling like the audio visual, audio visual like cutoff, like sensory like overload to like nothing is a really good way of like making me feel how it would probably feel to be in his yeah. shoes. On top of that, the visual effects proceeding to that moment and then afterwards when it's like the weird like kaleidoscopy stuff, mm-hmm. that looks so cool. I was just like, man, how did like... You have to, what is a quantum realm? And you got to like visualize that somewhat, how? It was just so well done. I was like, wow, like there's some really creative and talented people who like figured out a way to make me feel what it would probably feel to be in a situation, but also have it look super cool. So that was my favorite. I would be surprised if they followed it's like scientific theories to explain Uh, the Probably, yeah. I'm sure there's a whole team studying it for the writers of Marvel. I mean, there's probably like a section of people in Marvel who are like... We're the legitness squad. <laughs> Just, uh, anyway. Um, my favorite scene, I know it's like, I'd, I'd say it's like the easy favorite scene to pick, but I just really love when they're fighting on that little train set. It's, so it's just fun. It's funny to watch, you know, him throwing these tiny trains and just like, just like we kind of mentioned earlier, the perception change of how it's like, you know, the daughter, you know, Cassie watching from her closet, how it kind of dumb it looks. But then how intense it is in the moment, I just got a good laugh out of that. And it's just some cool action, too. So, yeah, I love those. I struggle with the favorite scene because I want to highlight just any scene with Luis in it. And any sort of point where he just says something where it's along the lines of, um, it's like, so how's your girlfriend? He's like, oh, she, oh, she left. She left me. And my mom died. And I got, I mean, I got put it. I got the van. <laughs> And then there, and then like another scene where like they go, well, nothing will stop us to help him out, to help, to help out Scott. And then they see the cops are like, back it up, back it up, yep, 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 back it up, yep, back, put it in reverse, back it up, yep, 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 back, back, back it up. <laughs> that scene is so hilarious, and I love Luis in it. Just kind of, he's a perfect comic relief for that movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's hilarious, and I Two think. <laughs> I think that maybe that might be my favorite scene where they're trying to explain themselves of like this, this is it. It's like he's in the system. I'm in the system. I'm he's in the system. <laughs> so I I love that, but it's but I will say it's a tie for that whole train scene. On I want to I want to see that whole scene in the view of his daughter. No no back and forth. Just the view of his daughter. It, that would be hilarious to see. That I love that train scene. It just reminds me of being a kid. With like my different Lego guys, right. like oh. uh, this is so relatable. Nostalgia right there. Right. So fun movie. Moving on to the last section here. Moving right along to Fall In. So this is where we talk about the meanings, messages of the film that we felt like were being portrayed, or maybe we just got picked up on. Uh, yeah, kind of walk away 
hopefully a better person because of it. And uh, what stood out to us? I'll go first if that's okay. Something that, thinking about it, like it wasn't anything super profound, and that's what I love about this movie, is that it portrayed something incredibly real, incredibly relatable, without trying to make it incredibly profound and and uh, revelatory. Before we started recording, we were talking about Annihilation, which I feel like is a movie that maybe for some people it's done well, but for me it was totally failed, train wreck. <laughs> it tried so hard to like be some revelatory understanding of humanity dealing with a, a very like human part of us and it just didn't work for me and like this movie is about a family and and people two families i should say but also just people in general who have to deal with the consequences of their mistakes and like have to either learn how to live with or overcome or work together to be better than the mistakes that or the consequences that come because of their poor choices and mistakes like a I mean, not necessarily as a poor, cho poor choice or mistake, but like a divorced family or like a bad relationship between mother and daughter or like a dude getting technology that he shouldn't have and selling it to the wrong people and so on and so forth. So I just, I think it was very like simple and relatable, but it didn't overdo it. It just like, it wasn't trying to like reveal anything great about it. It just like showed people going through that and how they handled it. Okay, my turn. I wanted to point out, so it was really interesting, I had a thought where this movie really focuses on, focuses on what a kid, how a kid views their parents. Because the daughter had a, a stepfather who was a cop, who was, you know, by law, he was doing the right thing. And then there was Scott Lang where he, that's, that's, his, that's her dad, biological dad, and he's doing what's best for her. And he's always bringing a smile to her face. And she's always seems to be like against the stepdad, even though he is, he is doing the right thing. He's doing his job. He's protecting people. He's keeping people safe. He's not out to get the stepfather, you know, like I hate you so much. Like you make me, you make, you know, my stepdaughter not like me. It's a point where he actually is helping, trying to help Scott not break the law. Yeah. So there's an interesting context to where how a kid looks at their parents and how a kid defines what their definition of a hero of what a hero is or how their parent can be a hero for them. And if it's a combination of saving their life, taking care of them, but like, sh but showing love for them and care. But I think the biggest thing was like sacrificing, being able to sacrifice for them, having your kids see that and understand that. Because you, st there's always arguments I see with like parents, or like with whether it's in movies or out of movies, where the parent says, "I do so much for you. I I buy this home. I buy all these things for you. I, I I take care of you. I put food on the table." But the kid doesn't quite get it, and he doesn't feel they don't feel that connection to the parent that they care about him. There's tons of movies with, of that example, but it I think maybe this is kind of a hidden message of where of like what parent what you what what good things you can do as a parent and it doesn't matter what kind of background you had whether you've been in prison or you're a cop so it's kind of complete different spectrums if that makes sense so anybody can be a good parent no matter what kind of past you have show it's just showing to your kids that you really do care about them and you're willing to sacrifice for them i agree also just having an understanding of him, like that funny scene where he gives Cassie a birthday present and it's like a super ugly rabbit, but she loves it. Like that's such a swerve on the traditional, like get him something oh, cute yeah. and fluffy. And she's like, it's so ugly. I love it. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, it's just good parenting. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Have a connection with his daughter. You know, like, although he's failed for quite a few years and because he was in prison, he's, he's doing his best to make an effort to do that. Yeah. And she has a whole room full of just toys and fluffy stuff and pink but she wants to hold the ugly doll when she shows. So oh, I thought that was so cute. She's sitting in bed holding her ugly yeah. doll. I was just like, man, cute little girl. Or like, this is just she's just a cute girl. When the he gets like the news that he escaped the stepdad and he like goes to leave, and she's like, are you searching for my dad? I hope you don't catch him. Like, <laughs> oh, she's just so cute. Yeah, just like I think it's way cool. Bring up a good point. Just like creating those awesome moments, like between like parent and child. Like, children remember those moments 
Like, I could look back on my life, I could tell you, like, countless moments of, like, whether I've, like, had, like, a really good experience with my parents or not. So, parents stuff, like, I think we've had, like, we've mentioned this in a lot of the movies so far, like, big themes that stick out to us are stuff with our parents. Like, they play a huge role in our lives. Yeah. I also think on the flip side, the relationship of Hank Pym and Hope, and, like, the lack of those moments that caused the distance between them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until, like, they started having those moments again by having us train Scott that they were able to be open and honest. And then that honesty led to even further moments where they build a sweet suit for the wasp. Yeah. And um, another thing was, I was going to go off what Kellen was going to say that there's, I, there might, there's, I think there's a maybe a handful of moments or maybe even one or two moments that define someone's parenting. Like for me, when I was a kid, I was in kindergarten, and there was a fire truck at at the elementary school. And I decided to walk home instead of getting instead of walking across the street to get to my to my mom to drive to have her drive me and my friends home. And I got lost, and I ended up being my neighbor ended up was driving around looking for me, and she and she found me and brought me home. I remember walking across the lawn when I was like six years old, seven years old, and my mom running to me crying. Like that moment was the moment I realized how much my mom cared about me. And this movie portrays, to me, it gives a message that your kid can ha- are going to have those moments, and it doesn't matter who you are, you can give them a good moment yeah. to have that connection to where you show that love and appreciation and fulfill the purpose of who you are as a father, a mother, aunt, friend, brother, doesn't matter. Just like you can have a moment, and those moments – it's never too late. That's like true. like with Hope and Hank, it's it was they were both adult late into their adulthood, but with Scott and Cassie, it was father daughter still. Like she was young. So So who knew that um who knew that a Marvel movie that is a heist movie about a shrinking dude, superhero, bad guy versus good guy, would also make just like a really good movie about families and family dynamic. Quality awesome. stuff. That's I knew good, I liked this that's movie. A good movie. It just moved itself up on the list. <laughs> that was awesome. So I don't, I don't have any other. Yeah, I think that's a good that place good like to that. leave it. Yeah. So download our future episodes. Please help us. Subscribe. Send tell your friends there. about it. Because we got so behind, we're only going to have a one film break and then immediately jump into phase three of the MCU and then move on to everything else in the world Bigger of. Things. Yeah, everything else in the world of movies. Which is quite a bit. So anyway, stay tuned for all of those things. And uh, thanks for listening. Ciao, ciao. What do you do, baby? Is that home dogs? <laughs>